All right, turn to the Americans have just finished their movement phase. Uh, just a lot going on every single phase right now. Um, the the Axis had um, a pretty decent uh, first half of the turn. Uh, they managed to send down uh, a bunch of reinforcements into here. They've moved up to the river line, uh, these lower river lines, to stop the Commonwealth advance or to at least contest it. More on that in a minute. They got uh, a bunch of they got a new German HQ headed in from mainland Italy. A bunch of units crossed the the ferry here and are gearing up to move down south towards Mount Etna. Excuse me, and then um, obviously the. This group of Germans in here is readying to see what the Allies do. You can see that the Americans on their half of the turn have really started to spread out now. Um, they actually landed a bunch, almost all of the 2nd Armored Division up here, excuse me, over here. They landed at Cape Bianco um, after the road was cleared. A bunch of these Italian coastal units just surrendered. That left the beach wide open. The 2nd Armor came in here, and they've already pushed up uh, to get across these rivers to make it so that the Italians are going to have a hard time fighting them. And they're slowly making their way uh, up this way towards Palermo, uh, trying to... Um, established positions with those advances. The real trouble right now is that the Americans are really tight on supply. They've had to, they've had to come in, um, they've had to ship in supply all along the coast, but a lot of these ports are like 1T, 2T, you know, um, they had to repair the port at Lycata, that's up. They're going to have to do that a couple more turns in a row to really get it at running at full capacity. Now that Empedocle is captured again, same thing next turn, they're going to have to get some more supply in there. So it's, um, it's real tight. Um, you know, they could probably do more if they had more supply, but that's the system for you. OCS, right? You got to make do with what you've got and make the best decisions possible. The Allies opted not to move in on this position of Italians here simply because they don't have the supply to do it, although they did manage to capture the airbase outside town here. They managed to capture uh, this airbase over here was sort of a thrust. This is sort of the biggest thrust of the American turn. Captured this airbase. They actually destroyed the German plane that was sitting here and the unit, and so uh, have moved their own unit, the uh, air forces in here. So that's going to be a nice air net kind of over this section of the map um, for really the rest of the game or until they can move forward and capture more. We've got an infant full infantry division moving up here. They're going to attack in the um, combat phase and uh, uh, try and eliminate this stack here, which could potentially put this guy into some precarious supply situations. He's holding an air base as well, kind of in the elbow of this river. Again, not enough supply for the Allies to move in force here. Um, there's, I don't think there's any left under this HQ. There is a supply point here under the HQ, so if they do need it for something, uh, like this reserve unit needs to counterattack on the next turn, um, they do have some in reserve uh, ready for that. Um, over with the Commonwealth, uh, oh, and the one thing, the other thing I should mention is um, the, the German uh, Air Force has made a furious bombardment on a U.S. destroyer group, the other one that had been sort of caught out from the previous turn. They did manage to do um, a DG result on it, then they tried another mission to bomb it, and they just rolled terribly, so they ended up missing, sinking that destroyer group. That destroyer group now has been reinforced, and these American destroyers are going to basically walk, uh, sort of march their way up the coast with the land advance, uh, giving opportunities for more landings. As you can see, uh, most of the Americans have come out of the floating forces box at this point. Still a ton of supply in here that they're going to have to get out and landed. Um, these two landing craft are waiting for the exploitation phase uh, to drop their supply loads because they can bring them into ports. Um, and uh, that will be useful for um, uh, getting it on the map so that they don't use up port cap uh, in that particular phase. The 23rd armor from the British, a bunch of artillery and other... Um, headquarters there for both the Americans and the British are waiting to come on. That's going to happen next turn. And obviously over here in the uh, ground units box, uh, I still haven't done the air missions uh, yet. I do have to do some airdrops and uh, I can do some air transport missions as well. Uh, and I can do, I can actually transport supply in for that matter. So I, this situation may change here, but I wanted to give you a, a quick recap before I continue because I will forget everything that's happened. Uh, the other thing that has happened over here is that the, um, the British have moved up the road quite considerably. They've got a supply dump here, uh, and they've got another supply dump under this HQ, Syracuse. They're going to start repairing that port, which is going to up its capacity. It's going to be huge for the British. Um, but then the most significant thing that happened here was the British landed uh, a bunch of the Canadian uh, armor here in this hex here uh, to try and drive a wedge between sort of the oncoming reinforcements. They needed to get Augusta surrounded uh, this turn and try and take it. Unfortunately, um, while the landing did go great, the overrun on this um, assault gun unit ended up uh, going surprise against the, the Canadians. Uh, the assault gun surprised them on the overrun. Uh, that was a huge column shift to the left. They ended up taking two losses out of that attack, one from the combat result, and then they chose to take another one because they really badly needed to displace this unit to capture this airfield. They're going to drop some aircraft in there. The British are... Um, 
immediately. Uh, but it was a very heavy cost to pay. As you can see, two full uh, Canadian armor uh, brigades. I can't tell what those are. Nope, those are, looks like, uh, regiments. Uh, Canadian armor um, regiments destroyed. Uh, those could come back with replacements later, but very, very heavy cost uh, there. Um, and, you know, but it needed to be done. So uh, that's a trade that the Axis will take all day. Um, Kiri, I'm, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to do the, the, the airdrops yet for the British. The, obviously, the um, there's a, I could, you know, I might do it here potentially uh, because I do want to try and take Augusta. Now there's sort of some reinforcements there, although there are a couple coastal Italian defenders in there. I definitely am going to uh, be bombarding this and trying to um, put a DG on there. Uh, so I think probably the answer is drop the rest of the first airborne into here. See if I, because it is an airfield that I own, so that should make the drop more successful. And s although it's also risky because they could go into the ocean. Um, yeah, not quite sure yet. I, the other option is I could drop them over here and try and attack some of these German positions beyond the river. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, I'm going to take some losses doing whatever I do, uh, but it's important that I keep making headway, keep, keep the momentum going. So um, that's kind of where we're at. I'm going to do sort of the, the air transport and the air uh, drops, and then uh, I will come back sort of after the end of the turn and show you uh, how, if anything has changed there. But so far, pretty decent progress being made by the Allies. The supply situation is tight, uh, and the Axis, you know, have got some pretty good dug-in positions that are going to be tough to push out of. All right, airborne airdrops for the 82nd, complete disaster. Uh, they lost two of the units that were dropped, one of which fell into the, dropped into the ocean, the other which, um, after his aircraft got destroyed by flak, the other uh, which dropped somewhere in these mountains and was never heard from again. These guys were the only ones who landed, and they landed pretty far back from their drop hex, which was here. Uh, the British, on the other hand, had a really good airdrop. They only lost one unit who ended up getting lost somewhere out here. But uh, in, uh, by happenstance, one of the battle, the brigades, battle groups, and this uh, artillery, uh, our airborne artillery, uh, ended up landing right here along the Gornalunga River, right where they wanted it. And the other, the engineer unit, uh, airborne unit, ended up uh, right here uh, next to this attack. So that's actually going to let them... Um, really good positioning. So uh, British having all the luck right now, but uh, we are moving into the uh, reaction and, or sorry, excuse me, bombardment and reaction phase. And there's a lot of aircraft strikes that I'm going to need to do to take some of these positions. So I'm going to get on with that. Uh, so <laughs> every single attack that the allies have rolled this turn <laughs> have gotten surprise. And every single surprise has been at least four column shifts. They got surprise here just absolutely annihilated the defenders. There was a, a, a reserve stack that moved down from this base to try and beef up the defense. They got annihilated. A couple of them had to retreat here. Exploit four here. This British unit wiped the floor with the with the Italian defenders, got an exploit four here. The airborne units that were here across the river got surprised on the Germans. They got exploit markers. They moved across. They're going to be able to move and then help this Canadian unit attack this port, which I thought was out of reach uh, during the exploit phase. Uh, well, they're not going to, the Canadians will be able to attack, but this stack is going to be able to move there and attack during the exploit phase, which is something I did not think was going to happen. So we do have a chance to take that this turn. And then all the way over here, the Italians thought that this uh, Italian uh, division here might attack these uh, tanks, this armored unit that was in move mode. Is it a brigade? Uh, no, excuse me. That was a, this is a, um, a battalion. Uh, and uh, they <laughs> rolled and got defender surprise. And so they took a hit and had to retreat. So all in all, the Axis uh, just absolutely getting shocked and uh, plot twisted every which way across the island here. Uh, so a great uh, combat phase for the Allies, and we're going to move into exploit now, and I'll show you what happens with that. After all the exploits are done, a uh, really expensive turn for the Allies in terms of supply. They did manage to, in the exploit phase, get some more supply into Lakata, which was nice. That was able to fund... The attack here, but really all that did was push these guys back. Didn't actually do much to them. Captured the airfield, though, which was oops, uh, a key important uh, location. Moved some A36s in, fighter bombers. God, I am just spilling counters all over the place. That's the one problem I have with OCS. I wish the counters and hexes were bigger. It's uh, impossible to play with your bare hands. Um, and I think that is a real limiting factor to widening the audience to this system, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um... So yeah, so we captured the airfield here. Uh, we managed to uh, eliminate basically the defenders that were based out of this village, use the supply we captured to do it. And this breakdown unit that came from this division is going to be out of supply this turn, it looks like, yep. And so uh, that's going to allow these guys who are about to undg. there's 12 points of armor there that are going to be able to uh, 
attack next turn against that guy at half strength uh, when he goes out of supply. Up here, the airborne, they moved in, they tried to attack the port. Shockingly, both Italian coastal units uh, rolled for surrender and they both rolled to stay and fight, which was just a huge pain in the ass. And that one's the biggest one in the game. So there's still seven factors there. Thankfully, they're DG'd, and we got rid of the Italian unit that had uh, moved in on top of them. So they should fall next turn. They're out of supply. They've got no supply in the city left, and they're completely surrounded. So I'm hoping that should be a pretty easy one to take. Uh, but all in all, Allies making good progress here. Let me focus that for you. Uh, pretty good progress here. Um, the Americans especially are going to have a big turn next turn if they uh, are able to get a bunch of these coastal units to surrender because it is a wide open road all the way to Mar uh, Marsala and up to um, Trapani as well. Uh, so there's still some forces in, in the area, but the Germans and the Axis is really hoping they're going to be able to react. Some of these German units are going to have to probably come down and protect those ports. They didn't expect such a, a lightning fast uh, response helped in part because the second armor basically landed everyone here last turn. So uh, they're going to have to scramble. <clears throat> so let's roll for initiative. I believe, let me just check the turn sequence here. Um, I believe we've done exploitation. Yep. So we need to clean up now. So a bunch of these American units and, and uh, Commonwealth units are no longer disorganized, including these ships over here that got hit. So those destroyers back to full strength. That's pretty good. Um, is there anyone else on who is disorganized from the allies? I don't believe so. I'll dig, I'll make one more check before we're done. But, um, I did want to roll initiative for next turn because we are heading into July 17th. That is the second to last turn before, um, before the bonus points kick in, um, for uh, control or approach to these, uh, to these areas. And, uh, I don't know that the allies have made great progress, uh, in that regard. So one thing I did wrong last time when I rolled initiative, I rolled one D six, both sides should roll two D six. Um, I don't suppose it matters too much. I guess it does change the odds curve a little bit, but one D six is, you know, I've made the mistake. I lived with it, whatever. It's fine. So, uh, allies are white Axis is colored. Let's see what happens going into the next turn. Yeah, that's going to be an ally double turn. That's exactly what they wanted. They rolled a seven, Axis rolled three. So the allies uh, are going to get to go first in the next turn. That's huge. They're going to be able to bring on more supply. They're going to be able to bring on more reinforcements. They've got stuff in, in the uh, floating forces box that they can use to ship whatever they want in there. Um, they are, have essentially used the entirety of the Axis Air Forces uh, on this past turn. Uh, so they're not going to get a chance to respond. All of these units who are disorganized are going to stay disorganized. So that's going to be a big deal. Um, and this is the power of the double turn in OCS, right? The, the Allies made a tactical decision on the turn before last to not... Um, to let the axis, or on this turn, excuse me, to let the axis go first. And now in the, in the initiative roll for next turn, the allies are going to get to take back-to-back -back turns. So that can really, really um, help move an operation along in this system and um, is, is you know, deployed correctly when it goes your way. It can be very powerful, and we're about to see that in action coming up. So uh, let me get everything set up. Let me make start making the moves, and if anything interesting happens, I will show it to you. Germans Axis just wrapped up the uh, July 21st turn, or excuse me, the July 17th turn, and um, it was a pretty dismal uh, couple of days for the Allies, uh, the, especially for the British, who have been absolutely impotent when it comes to uh, trying to take some of these positions. The Just a really stout defense by the Axis here, and not even by particularly good Axis units. <clears throat> um, so what happened? Well, we ended up, the, the Allies ended up taking Augusta, which they desperately needed to do. They took some losses doing it because the Italian coastal units, uh, well, they, they rolled just absolutely terribly. Uh, and the Italian coastal units there um, inflicted a hit even though there was uh, no defense supply. Uh, so, but they did get the first airborne engineers in there. They're gonna start repairing that port next turn. Three separate surprise attacks on this hex right here. There was a German or an Italian unit in there. I think it was Italian, maybe in German. Three separate um, uh, overruns, three separate rolls for surprise, all with an advantage, three defender surprise results. The Allies ended up losing uh, two tank battalions and a mobile infantry, um, trying to literally just take an open hex. It was unbelievable unbelievable um they're just i don't know if they you know the the british put meat pies in their guns instead of bullets but uh 
it has been absolutely dreadful for the Commonwealth trying to get across this river, which they should have been able to do very easily this turn, and uh, they just couldn't do it. So the Airborne obviously got uh, landed across. They're still there. They got some artillery in there, uh, but the Fallschirmjägers now have sort of set up. These are really high-quality German units. They've set up across the, the river here, and uh, they're just going to make uh, life very uh, slow and uh, grindy for the Commonwealth there. The Commonwealth do have some artillery they're going to bring on board um, this turn from the floating forces box. They're really going to need that. They're really going to need supply. The Allies in general are stretched super thin for supply really across the map. Um, and that may be partially because I am not the best OCS player getting right back into the game. Um, the, uh, the, the Commonwealth are also going to try and load up a bunch of special forces on this, on a duck that's in here. And they're going to try and uh, drive it up the coast where the, the carrier and, and battle group uh, from the Royal Navy are stationed and uh, try and get in behind here, potentially. Um, the problem is these they don't want to be messing with these Fallschirmjäger units because they have really high action ratings. Um, so, you know, maybe they drop in here to put them out of supply. That could be one option. We'll have to figure it out once we get there. But you can see more Fallschirmjäger uh, troops coming in all the way from uh, Reggio from the, in the north. They're going to take up positions here, so the Commonwealth really got to get across there before it becomes impossible. Um, they're spending a lot of supply, doing not a lot, <laughs> as I mentioned. Uh, elsewhere um, on the board, you know, the Americans, really not a ton of forces here in the middle where the defense is strongest. Germans are, and Italians, pretty happy to just let them kind of um, mess around, not do too much. The Americans have been repairing ports. They've got one more to Lakata's at a port cap of two, which is going to be good. You know, the Americans do have to garrison some of the supply with the, all these Axis forces here because if they don't, they can just shoot down and capture some of that stuff, and that would be pretty devastating given the supply situation. Um, they did, the Italians here who uh, did sort of back back off, and in general sort of across the middle of the map, um, the, the Axis have kind of backed off a little bit just because they were in kind of an extended position, and, um, you know, even though there wasn't a huge uh, American threat, they want to be in the best defensive position possible. They're flush with supply really up in this part of the map, They don't, and, and here as well. Um, they really have no threats that they need to face here, and they just want to make sure they keep it that way. Obviously, the uh, this railroad here, super important for trade supply um you know going east west across the map if i had been smarter i made maybe may have made a heavier uh, attack up this highway uh, up this road or up this railroad to try and get control of this junction but instead i had the americans go uh west um and and try and cut up here um towards the port um at uh, palermo so uh that may or may not be the best it may have been the best strategic decision um but you know, it is what it is now. We're, we're basically fully committed. Uh, we did land this, the rest of the 2nd Armored Division uh, here along with this HQ in Capo San Marco. Uh, they took off and have gotten all the way to Marsala, which is great. That's half of what they need to open up this uh, shipping box where they can start shipping in troops in the north. I believe the other one they have to take is, uh, I think it's Palermo that they have to take. Um, or it might be Trapani. I can't remember. Anyways, um, you can see that they're really nowhere close to Palermo, which is very problematic. Uh, it's looking like between, you know, between the Palermo capture and the uh, uh, Catania capture, the Allies are going to take a VP penalty at the end of next turn unless something miraculous happens. Um, but, you know, the U.S. really trying to gain control of the western part of the island here. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Blue Stripes coastal defense units did not surrender, so they're going to have to fight through them. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the movement phase, you know, the, the uh, Italians sent down a unit here just to cut supply for this unit who got a little too far forward. He was the one who tried to launch an attack and get these guys to surrender, and they didn't. And now he's stuck out here, and now he's got a unit behind him. Um, so they're just gonna they're just gonna stay there and force that unit to figure out what he needs to do. Uh, the second armored, you know, they might send some units up this way. They've got one unit here. They've got two units and an artillery piece here. Really, what they want to do is gain control of this railroad um, uh, up to this point, probably. Uh, but you know, there's an airfield up here that they want to capture. Uh, so you know, this the Germans and Italians here probably not in the best position. They you know they have supply, but they're not gonna last very long and. Um, they're just trying to slow down the American advance. They want to buy time. They don't really necessarily care, especially the Italians. The, the Axis have been throwing Italians in the way of basically everything the Americans have been doing, um, and that's what they want to do. They don't suffer any penalties for that necessarily, but um, you know the Germans may want to get out of there at some point. The, the, they're, we're getting to the stage of the game where the Axis is going to want to start to think about preserving their forces to get them across 
up there on the ferries towards the end of the game for points. They don't want to lose everything trying to slow down the allies. So uh, I'm trying to ride that that line, that fine line we talked about, and um, you know keep keep that keep the allies slow and bottled up, which I think the Axis have done a great job so far, uh, but not lose too many units doing it. And I think they're in an okay position so far. Next turn we'll reassess if we maybe want to move the defense back um, and just shore it up and try and start shuttling units off uh, this direction. You know we're still many turns away from when the the VP scoring is going to happen uh, for time, but, uh, you know, never too early to start thinking about it. The Allies, uh, the one good thing I will say for the Allies this turn, they've absolutely decimated the Axis Air Forces. The Italian Air Forces have basically this group here in, in Italy. Most of the on-map aircraft for Italy have been absolutely destroyed. The Allies have, have a really good air network all along the coast, and they're able, with their superior aircraft, to just launch uh, fighter uh, sweep after fighter sweep after fighter sweep. They wiped out a two German uh, BF-109s this turn over here. There's only one left right in there. This carrier group has done some great work eliminating air units. Um, the Axis basically don't really have an air presence on the island anymore. They did try and come in here and bomb the airfield here where there's a bunch of... Um I'll show you uh, where this this uh, tank battalion and some supply, but you know there's a couple P40 stationed here, and, and uh, the Axis did try and come in there this turn and try and bomb that airfield to see if they could do some hits, but uh, they were turned away by a defender from an airbase down over here somewhere. Uh, one of these air one of these air bases uh, had a, a fighter intercept, and it ended up uh, putting to route a whole squad of German bombers and destroying the fighter escort. Um, and so the Germans decided that it was going to be pretty suicidal. Uh, basically, anywhere on the map that they wanted to bomb, it wasn't going to be uh, doable just because the American aircraft are so good. I mean, you know, the, the Americans rolled pretty well in terms of casualties. The air pile for uh, the Axis, as you can see. Um, you know, Italian units all dead, German units all dead, German units, those got removed from the game, but uh, it's not been good for the Axis air, and uh, it's going to continue to be that way, so I think, you know, that's going to be the key for the Allies to sort of leverage their their air power um, to hopefully make something happen. Unfortunately, they rolled bad on the ground bombardment roll last turn, so they can only do one, which really slowed down their advance. So it's been a mixed bag for them. But we're headed into July 21st. That's the first key turn for scoring. And uh, we don't know who's going first, so let's do the initiative roll. Obviously, again, colored units or colored dice are the Axis, and the white dice are the Allies. Looks like the Axis wins initiative. They're gonna want to probably make the Allies go first. Um, they could take a double turn here. Uh, that's, you know, that's one consideration. Hmm. I'm going to think about that. Uh, and I will let you know what ends up getting decided when I check in again. Okay, well, I am, um, so it, it's invisible to you because you're watching an edited video, but um, I actually have not played this game in a week, over a week actually now. I had a friend in town and we um, went on vacation for a week and uh, I just have not been home very much. So coming back to Sicily too, he after he's uh, has left and, and gone home, um, has been quite a shock because I had to uh, get my mind back into the game, as it were. Um, remember what I was trying to do, what I had positioned myself to set up for. The Axis did make the U.S. take the first, or the um, excuse me, the Allies take the first turn uh, on turn four, um, and they've actually done a pretty good job uh, for the most part um, across the map, uh, accomplishing what I believe I remember they wanted to accomplish this turn. I'm nearing the end of the uh, Allies' turn, and I just wanted to show um, this Commonwealth uh, exploit phase because it is fairly important. But um, as you can see, the uh, Commonwealth have finally broken the German position at the Lentini Bridge, thanks in large part to this massive stack of naval units for with a shore bombardment. They rolled outstanding, did a step loss, I believe, in this stack here, um, and uh, DG'd both uh, of these units um, who were uh, forward, uh, sort of holding this this river line here, um, and then this huge Commonwealth division, along with some armor, these Royal Tanks, and the Ontario Canadian Armor um, Brigade there, uh, or sorry, not the brigade, uh, they are a um, battalion. Uh, they uh, attacked uh, across, got the little toehold here across this bridge, and uh, managed to drive the Germans back again. Um, so now the Commonwealth has a straight shot up the coast uh, towards this HQ, and they're hoping that they are, can take advantage of that right now while they have this opportunity. And this is where we get into um, sort of how you play OCS well. Not that I am going to claim that the, I am playing well right now, but at least in theory, this is how you're supposed to use the system. So we put uh, these Commonwealth units in reserve uh, at the beginning of the turn. There are two armored, oops, excuse me, two armored units here in move mode, all screwing this up, um, along with a truck. 
uh, that belongs to this armored division or this corps, I believe. And uh, they uh, are under reserve marker. So I've done all my combats. I've done all of my um, uh, artillery bombardments, my naval bombardments, my air missions. There's not a ton of air missions uh, available to the Allies at this point. Most of these airfields are empty. Um, I will probably, after this exploit, uh, pull a pull some air missions uh, against some of these air bases where there's still access air power that can be destroyed um, because... Uh, I would like to wipe it out as quickly as possible um, or potentially attack some of the, the ports that the Axes have uh, to just lower the ability for them to put uh, bring supply into the battlefield, which is going to be important. Um, but first, we're going to do this exploit attack. So um, I, I put these units in reserve. That means they couldn't really, well, and actually, yeah, they couldn't uh, really do much during the normal movement and combat phases. But now that we are in the exploit phase, I can release them from reserve, and I'm going to do that. That's going to cost two tokens of supply, which I'm going to remove from uh, off the map where you cannot see it. Uh, and HQ is throwing it to them. Um, and then they, that is going to fuel them up so they can move. So uh, they're going to get moving. Uh, one, two, they're going to come into this hex here. They are then going to spend three movement points to attack this DG unit here, which is a uh, assault gun, which is good for the Germans because it's going to negate my armor advantage. However, uh, six to 1.5 is not great odds. Um, so... Uh, we got to roll for surprise because we are doing a movement attack. And, and when you're overrunning, the surprise factor again is you need a nine or more. The difference in, there is no difference actually in action rating. This guy is minus one action rating because he's DG. These guys are a three. So we're hoping we can roll a nine uh, and just not roll low. We, ooh, that's not good. We rolled a six, which is actually defender surprise, unfortunately. Thankfully, it's only one column. The die that you check uh, rolled a one. So, um... I will calculate those odds real quick and be right back. So thankfully, uh, the Commonwealth avoiding a major surprise disaster, um, it works out to a three to one attack in open terrain here along this coastal road. Um, and we're gonna roll that up. So it's a three to one attack, uh, no modifiers to the die roll because the action rating is the same. Hopefully we can roll well. Uh, we rolled a six, which is not great. Uh, so at three to one in open, that's an attacker lost one and a defender option one. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, we will take the loss to this top armored unit. Uh, it's the first unit the Allies have lost this turn uh, and all of the things that they have done. Uh, and then this this uh, German unit here has an option, which means he needs, to, he needs to take a loss or he needs to retreat. He is going to choose to retreat behind this river, the Premisole Bridge, the famous Premisole Bridge. Uh, and this unit can then uh, continue moving. Well, he has to take ground because it was an overrun. So he spent uh, five of his movement points. Um, and he could uh, keep going if he wanted to. Um, we're not in a great supply situation if we continue moving. Uh, he could, let's see, what could he do? He's got seven movement points left. If he were to cross that river, um, that would be uh, four more movement points to take this airfield, which he could do, but then he would be in a very dangerous supply situation because he would be sort of cut off from the rest of the, the Commonwealth here. So I think he is going to stay uh, right there, hold, be the anchor head to uh, this river line here. It's a nice defensive position if the Germans get any ideas, and obviously it puts some pressure on this line of Germans here, who really are going to have to fall back this turn because they're in sort of an untenable position here. If they get surrounded, they're going to be cut out of supply. Uh, and that would not be good for them because that is, uh, these are really good German units and they're also worth points if they're able to escape the island of Sicily before the end of the game. So, um, you know, that exploit could have gone better, but sometimes that's OCS for you. Um, I'm pretty sure I made the most of that opportunity as, as much as I could based on what units I had available to, to eliminate this guy. If I, if he had not been an assault gun, I think that would have gone very differently because it negated my armor bonus, but, uh, there you are. Uh, the Commonwealth did land a bunch of artillery this turn uh, via amphibious landing and, and also created a port here, uh, which is going to be super helpful for them to keep the offensive going. The one thing that the uh, the Commonwealth are really having trouble with is supply. They have been using all of the supply that's been able to get into them and have been very short on it. As you can see, uh, the, the breakout is going uh, not as fast as they maybe wanted, but 
Um, certainly they have made progress this turn. The problem is, is there's just not many avenues for supply to get in here. This isn't actually not on the map. Um, and so this HQ is having to draw from sort of all up and down the coast to get it forward. Um, and it's really putting, uh, it's hampering the, the Commonwealth's ability to really uh, get lots of attacks going um, while the Germans are weak. Germans obviously next turn are going to be able to bring down a lot of these units and reinforce the Mount Etna area, the Premisol Bridge area. So it's going to be a slog uh, for looks like the rest of the game. Uh, but the British are repairing ports uh, as they can. That's where a lot of supply is going. Elsewhere on the map, uh, I thought I'd just do a quick overview of what's been going on. So uh, the Americans finally cleaned up this stray Italian unit in here. The British have pushed uh, some big infantry divisions up against this Italian division, trying to threaten uh, this grouping of Germans here, the, uh, what is this, the HG Panzer uh, Corps. Um, and so they are likely going to have to pull back this turn. They're kind of, um, these, these U.S. Special Forces sort of started to threaten the supply line here. So likely the Germans are going to pull these guys back to the much more defensible mountain terrain here on this highway. Um, and that might bring a stop. That will, the, the Commonwealth units here are going to be sort of out of range of their HQ uh, if that happens. So they're probably going to have to break off and come up this way, which again, not great for the Germans in general to, to seed sort of this middle line here. But um, the this core is going to have options once they pull back. They're going to be able to, uh, you know, contest the flank here. They can keep moving back. Um, up and around if they need to. So really, they're just trying to buy time, keep their options open. And uh, yeah, uh, the Americans here uh, started a bit of a breakout. Part of the second armored division managed to successfully eliminate a German unit that was uh, located here. Again, another German unit that would have given points had it been able to escape. Uh, the Germans now have taken here, I'll show you the losses. The Germans have taken some losses this turn on all on these three units here that could have provided points. And they're actually pretty good German units is for that matter. Uh, and some Italians have gone down as well. So the Germans now are probably going to change posture and they're probably going to start pulling back and narrowing their defensive lines. Uh, this, these guys still have a lot of options in here, but they do have to be careful because over in the west side of the map, uh, despite this unit being out of supply, who's an American who got too far forward, um, the Americans down here have really done a good job of mopping up what was left here. There's uh, really, the Italian resistance here is pretty token. These Germans are in sort of a situation where if they stay, they might get surrounded over here. The Americans have pushed up the coast. They've captured Marsala. They were very close to capturing um, Trapani this turn. Um, that will fall. It, it, it's only a matter of time. This is a Italian, uh, Italian division who is really weak um, and has taken a hit. They've got two more hits left on them. So uh, it's only really a matter of time before the second armor rolls up here and, and sort of wipes them out. And that puts these guys in a dangerous spot. They also want to make sure they contest the uh, point, the port of Castella Mare del Golfo here, uh, because they don't want to make it easy for the allies to capture that. There's other ports uh, up here that, well, this is the big one, um, Palermo, that they're going to want to protect for as long as possible, specifically the Italians. So um, the noose, though slowly, is tightening around the island. Um, the, the Americans in particular making good ground, the Commonwealth really up against a brick wall. Um, and they're really trying to hope that the Americans can break through somewhere up here to sort of adjust the, the status quo uh, along the route here. Um, what else do I have to say? I mean, it's, you know, I'm really enjoying the system and the thinking, putting the operational uh, thinking cap on and, and seeing if I can pull off the plans that I've got. You know, maybe I'm a little unorthodox. I'm not the best OCS player. And I, I stepping away for a week certainly didn't do me any favors. But uh, we're at the end of the American half of turn four. The Germans are up next. They're going to probably reposition and sort of strengthen their defensive core. And uh, after this turn, we're going to get some uh, probably bonus points for the Axis because they've managed to hold off the Allies from getting uh, the two ports that they needed to by the end of this turn and getting within um, the straits up there at Messina. So that's where we stand. And, uh, yeah, back at it now that I am home and, uh, fresh from vacation. Uh, one other thing I wanted to cover real quick. Uh, one, someone left a comment on the previous video asking if I could show, um, a couple of things related to rail rules, specifically, um, detrainable hexes, rail cap, and train busting. Um, so I will, I'll address that real fast. So I, I will say one thing, and that is this is maybe the worst OCS game to <laughs> exemplify or demonstrate the rule, those rules, um, purely because the rail in this game does not play really a huge part in the, the, the conflict. Um, so literally if I was playing any other OCS game, it'd be a huge part of it, especially on the East front. Um, this particular game, not so. I mean, we do have railroads, but there is no rail cap, uh, for like the first half of the game for either side. Um, and all rail cap is, is how much, um, how many units or supply you can ship 
uh, on your railroads uh, from off map or from other locations around the map. Uh, and in this game, while we do have railroads, there is no rail cap. Uh, the railroads basically just follow the island. Uh, they go, they do go up here. Um, they're mostly used for supply uh, sources, which I, that's a detrainable hex as a supply source. I'll explain that in a minute. But essentially, um, halfway through the game, the allies get a rail cap of two, which is pretty small. Um, and all it really allows them to do is shuttle stuff from the beach up into the interior or off to the east, essentially. Um, but uh, shipping works exactly the same way. By the way, uh, you have a, a, a sea cap, which is the amount of stuff that you can send in via ocean. So I'm pulling supply in every turn from the Tunisia, uh, this Tunisia box, which is, has an infinite amount of supply here. Um, and you know, this the game basically says the allies can bring in eight, um, eight supply points worth of stuff, whether that is actual supply or whether that's units as well, because obviously they, the size of what you're bringing in translates between the two. Um, so that's all that rail cap and sea cap are. It's just how much stuff you can bring from off map into a place where you need it. Um, now, in terms of train busting, uh, that's what this little marker is here for. This is simply, very simply, a, um, a barrage against a facility. So you'll use aircraft primarily to do this, but essentially you'll pick a hex on the map um, you know, someone wanted to know how to use train busting effectively. I am maybe not the person to tell you that, but I guess here, here would be an example. If I decided to do train busting here, for example, so you'd send some aircraft in on a mission, assuming they succeeded at the mission and rolled well on the barrage against the facility table, which is the table that you use. Uh, let's find it. It's this table here, which is what you use anytime you're barraging a port or a... Um, you know, an airfield, really just anything that's not a unit, you're barraging a facility. And so if you get a uh, an asterisk here on the result, train busting is successful. So you're using all the same mechanics. There's no rules changes for train busting. Um, all it does is it puts a train busting marker down um, and it basically exerts a zone around it uh, that makes it ex more expensive to move through and doubles the cost of any um, supply that you're shuttling through that hex. So for example, if this Italian unit is trying to pull uh, well, it, um, it's hard to explain, but basically, like, uh, if 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 uh, if your rail cap, for example, let's say it was here. Actually, let's do this. This is a better example because I just talked about rail cap. Let's say I'm trying to shuttle some supply along this rail line over to the coast for the Germans to help defend, right? Well, normally, they would, let's say, they don't have a rail cap in this game, but if, if they did, let's say they had a rail cap of two, um, this doubles the cost of supply moving through that hex. So they could, if they couldn't bring two supply through that hex, they could only bring one because double that would cost the two essentially. So it just makes it more expensive to move through and bring supply through. Um, that's train busting, very simple. Uh, and then detrainable hexes. So detrainable hexes are essentially what they sound like. They're a hex on a railroad that is used to embark and disembark supplies, troops. Um, you know, it has all the, all of the logistics you would need um, in order to get people on and off a, a railroad, essentially. Um, so there's two two ways that you can be a detrainable hex. You can be a, a village or a town, some sort of city along a rail line. So for example, this hex here is a detrainable hex, meaning you can ship supply into here and, and get it off the train and put it on the map, right? So you can't just drop supply anywhere on the map. It's got to come out at a detrainable hex if it's coming in via, via railroad. Um, and detrainable hexes, in addition to being uh, towns and villages and cities or whatever, um, are also hexes where there is an HQ on the rail line. So for example, down here in this port, because there's a USHQ here, that makes this hex a detrainable hex. Now, it also hel helps that uh, there's a city here as well. But if there wasn't, this HQ would, would basically act as a city. And so you could rail supply and drop it there. Um, or, you know, take units off if they were coming in via rail. Now, like I said, this game is not, is the worst possible example on OCS of showing you rail cap and detrainable hexes. For the purposes of this game, detrainable hexes are basically only used as supply sources. So essentially, if you can trace your units back to a detrainable hex via a certain range and that detrainable hex goes, you know, um, to a port. In this game, basically the ultimate supply sources, instead of using like a map edge, it's all ports that you control. So any port capable of sustaining one uh, one supply point or more. So for example, Port Empedocle here, which is uh, right here, this is a supply source for the allies. So as long as all the allied units can ultimately trace back to this port, um, they're in supply. And a unit way operating way out in here, it, basically what it has to do is trace its supply to a, a, a detrainable hex, so either an HQ or a city on a rail line that they control, and then that rail line would come back to that port. Um, and so those are your considerations. And obviously when you're attacking the enemy, you want to try and cut those as, as, as 
sort of quickly and as efficiently as possible so that they can't get supply. I'm obviously doing a terrible job of that as I go around the, the coasts or whatever. Um, but, you know, if I had been smart, you know, I might have driven up the center here and, um, you know, cut like over here, right? Like cut this this port on this railroad because that would have ultimately put uh, a bunch of units that were tracing to it out of supply. Um, I think most, actually most access units could have traced to Palermo. Um, well, actually, you know what? It's funny right now because yeah, Palermo's got one supply point worth of capacity. So Palermo acts as a supply source. So even if I had done that, I would not have been able to do that. But for example, if, I, if I'm able to actually strike Air, air barrage the port and bring it down one more then suddenly a lot of problems for the axis because i don't believe in the western side of the island they have um, a port worth one sp so they would have to trace their supply ultimately all the way back up here and so if i had been smart about this from the beginning i would have driven the americans straight up through here cut this rail junction and then bombed the heck out of palermo and that would have essentially made this island uh, the island over here pretty difficult um for for a supply situation trapani down over here might have done it for him so um, that's basically rail cap and um, train busting and detrainable hexes uh, sort of explained in a nutshell. Um, it has a lot to do with the supply as everything does in this game. Very bad example with Sicily. If you look at any other OCS game, it'll make a lot more sense. But there you go. Thanks for leaving the comment. Um, and I appreciate all the comments people have left on, on, this, uh, on this series so far. Um, it really... Uh, you know, I was a little nervous to get into OCS because I know there's a lot better players out there than I am. So um, it's nice to see people enjoying the series. Going to wrap up this video with a quick overview of the Axis turn. They actually had a really good turn, um, all things considered. They managed to pick off a bunch of uh, allied units, as you can see here, some good allied units that had either been overextended um, or were just in sort of a, a position sort of on the fringes where they could uh, mobilize and attack. They, uh, they're really showing no signs of backing off per se. They have a real strong position down the middle of the island still. They were able to move in here, eliminate an armored unit down here, and now this is actually dangerous for the allies because this HQ has really nothing in it um, other than this armor unit protecting it. There's just an artillery unit and a very light a sort of mixed armor unit here that's now, um, you know, under threat from these these Germans. They felt that they could, you know, make a, a quick snipe in some of these areas here. They also did it over here against the uh, Commonwealth. They took out two of the uh, first airborne units that were sort of on this river line by uh, sort of moving the HG Panzer, some of those, uh, those units in that formation around down to the flank here in this open land where this recon unit could get an attack bonus and clear. Um, and so now all of a sudden uh, the, the Commonwealth are, are sort of feeling the heat along, along this river uh, and what happens on the next turn is going to be very critical to see how this develops. Um, the Commonwealth are going to get some reinforcements this turn. They're going to get a big infantry division that they'll be able to ship in potentially or at least land on the beach. They've also got those special forces over here with the duck unit that they're going to maybe land to try and capture that airfield. This headquarters, not very defended um, strongly. There is an armored car unit there that could provide some um, some potential defense. But uh, in general, you know, there's, there's naval units here. So this is kind of an interesting situation here. The Allies did just win... Um, the initiative by one point over there, as you can see. So uh, they're going to elect to go first. They don't want the Axis to build momentum and sort of uh, counterattack uh, this invasion, which I guess should tell you how poorly I'm playing the Allies in this game. Um, you know, the, the Axis did back off here in the West. They're trying to protect... Uh, the ports over in the western side of the island. The allies in the reaction phase did actually manage to damage Palermo again, so that is no longer a supply source for the Axis. The only supply source on the western side of the island is um, Trapani over here, which uh, again, like I said, is going to fall the next turn, and that's another reason why the allies wanted to go first. They want to clear that out, and they want to get moving uh, towards Palermo. At the end of this turn, there was a point, a victory point added to the total, which is good for the Axis. The Allies did not make enough progress towards their port objectives. Um, and the Allies are really concerned right now. Uh, we've got another stack of Axis armor here who's basically unimpeded down to the beach. Uh, if, if some defense isn't put up here, these French units are very weak, um, could easily be overrun. Um, so they really need to get into a position to kind of uh, blunt this sort of newfound Axis confidence down the middle of the island. So we'll see what happens. We are going into turn five. That is going to be, uh, you know, we're approaching sort of the halfway mark of the game. Um, these turns are taking a while because there's a lot of units now on the map, but, uh, you know, it's been fun. So hope you've been enjoying this. I will uh, continue to play. I might not update as frequently as I have been just because it does seem to have solidified a little bit around the island now that the landings are complete. But when big stuff happens, I'll, uh, I'll check in.